Over 30 international airlines service Hong Kong with more than 1,000 flights weekly. This vital city stands at the crossroads of Asia in the heart of the Orient. So many things to see and do. So give yourself time to take it all in. Its hotels have always been among the finest, and over 13,000 rooms await the world's travelers. On the Kowloon Peninsula and Hong Kong Island itself, these luxurious hotels are filled with every comfort. Many have gourmet restaurants, rooftop bars, discotheques, terrace gardens, swimming pools, and all the traditional customs and attentive courtesies which the Chinese people offer so readily. Take a tour by bus, taxi, a ferry, or a sampan, and begin to explore the real Hong Kong, bustling with people, activity, and life. A breathtaking view overlooking all of Hong Kong is from the top of Victoria Peak. You can drive up or take the tram, and the site is well worth the trip. Stand on the top of the peak and turn 180 degrees, and you can see almost the entire 400 square miles of Hong Kong. A helicopter tour of Hong Kong is revealing and fascinating, giving you a whole new look at the city, the countryside, and the 236 outer islands. This is Aberdeen, Hong Kong's most colorful fishing port and home for 25,000 people. <laughs> Today, these junks are motorized. The larger ones remain fishing at sea for one to two weeks. The boats on which the water folk live, eat, sleep and work are veritable Noah's Arks, inhabited by pigs, chickens, dogs and cats. And the water lanes are often more crowded than the streets of central Hong Kong. These families with their children and animals live a happier, freer and more healthy outdoor life. The fresh fish are cleaned and hung out to dry. Everywhere there is something to see and places to visit. Like this world famous floating restaurant with its traditional Chinese dishes. This water city has all the daily services of land. Floating shops, markets, school taxis, doctor services, temples, and even marriage counselors. The marketplace in central Hong Kong is always a hive of activity, filled with the best of everything. Fresh fish just off the hook or out of the basket. Live lobsters, meat, vegetables, fowl, and endless jars of delicacies. So one day, get up early and see it all happen as the produce moves quickly into buying hands. Most of what you see comes daily from the People's Republic of China, for Hong Kong can't possibly begin to supply its huge population of over four and a half million without imports from all over the world. And the ducks. The choice ducks that are constantly being fattened for market, then cooked in delicious Peking style. In the new territories, the oxen are still ploughing the fields. The farms flourish with rice, green beans, fruit and fresh chrysanthemums. Here, the traditional methods of farming are maintained by the Hakkas, who wandered into South China and are recognized by their distinctive hats.
The new territories have rich valleys and hillsides which are tilled almost as they were a thousand years ago. Rice paddies spread over the flat lands, while kumquats and peach trees bloom in neat orchards. An aerial view of these rice fields shows the great cultivation and care. Every nook and cranny and every fertile corner down to the very water's edge is farmed. Back in the city, life surges forth with sights, sounds and strange smells. Go to Cat Street, Ladder Street and Hollywood Road, for they offer a fascinating collection of antique shops, food stalls and expert craftsmen working on unusual hand-carved ivory. Taxis and buses are plentiful, like the ferries and cruising junks. But walking is one of the best ways to explore the small streets and markets filled with interesting souvenirs. And almost certainly you'll want to buy some of those duty-free cameras, radios, jewellery, clothes and fine cashmeres. World travellers all agree, shopping in Hong Kong is the best. A charming trip away from the busy sights and sounds of urban Hong Kong is a visit to some of the ancient Buddhist temples. The yellow rooftop temple is called the Temple of 10,000 Buddhas and is at Shatin in the New Territories. The beauty and serenity of this temple is preserved by its position at the end of Chopstick Road, high on Lantau Island. Burial to the Chinese is very important, for tradition has it that if you bury your loved one where the winds are favorable, good fortune will befall you. Along the water's edge, the Kowloon Canton Railway winds its way through the new territories daily, to and from China. The countryside, when seen from above, is beautiful, empty, and very peaceful. Enjoy the rolling sandy beaches of Silvermine Bay or those on Hong Kong Island where the country club and golf course sweep down to the sea. There are many interesting walks along the seashore and in the hills where wildflowers and delicate butterflies live and bamboo orchids blossom freely alongside the Hong Kong purple violets. Perhaps you'd prefer to take a junk or use one of the ferry services to explore some of the outer islands and their deserted beaches. Typhoon shelters, like this one in Aberdeen, are strategically placed around Hong Kong Island, for yachting is a must among the Taipans, the executives and their companies. Whether you're a sailor, swimmer or fisherman, the coastline provides it all. Hong Kong has accomplished great things with its many housing projects. They have more than a million people living in resettlement housing on Hong Kong Island and Kowloon Peninsula, and one of the largest estates ever built by the Hong Kong Housing Authority provides living accommodation for over 50,000 people. This is one of the government's major achievements. Hong Kong has two key learning centers, the University of Hong Kong and the Chinese University, housed here on four levels covering an area of 300 acres. A mile wide gap between Kowloon and Hong Kong Island is linked by a fast and efficient four lane harbor tunnel. Above, single, double and triple-decker ferries make their equally fast and efficient journeys to and fro. Like the streets of Hong Kong, the waterways are crowded, busy and never still. The small boats hurry the children to school, while ferries shuttle back and forth, filled with people setting off to work. 
Here one can see and feel the energy of a new day beginning. The people that you see in the street, the faces, the children, the families, although busy, are warm and friendly. On their way to work, they usually stop at sidewalk stalls for dim sum, small, tasty, steamed and fried delicacies. It's hard to find a city that can offer such a variety of transportation. Light buses that pick up and stop anywhere the passenger wishes, trams, rickshaws and taxis, whose rates are among the lowest in the world. It might be crowded, but you can always get a ride. Amidst the constant movement of life and work, there is always time for the morning Chinese exercises called Tai Chi, a series of graceful ballets performed in precise slow motion on pedestrian overpasses, in parks and on rooftops. It's supposed to unite body and mind in harmony and strength. Hong Kong Harbour, one of the finest deep water harbours in the world, provides this city with its way of life. Its ferry services are second to none, with schedules as accurate as any fine watch. Most of Hong Kong's junks are motorized, but these that you see under full sail come from China. A beautiful sight, especially at sunrise or sunset. A picture that's hard to forget. Hong Kong is one of the fastest freight handling ports in the Orient and a key stop for passenger liners and round the world cruises. The tonnage of cargo continues to mount and although there's a modern container terminal, a large proportion of it is still loaded and unloaded by more than 2,000 lighters and junks which tie up beside the fleet of visiting ships at more than 70 mooring buoys. Founded for commerce, sustained by commerce, Hong Kong exports to more than 25 major markets. Here is the home base for some of the biggest and most active conglomerates in the world. It is presently the largest exporter of toys, in addition to being a major exporter of fashionable, high-quality clothing. Most Chinese are born gamblers. Like any international city, Hong Kong has banking facilities for any visitor. The chartered and Hong Kong Shanghai banks use two of the most up-to-date computerized banking systems in the world. And almost every foreign currency can be bought or sold for Hong Kong dollars which are printed exclusively by the chartered Hong Kong, Shanghai and Mercantile Banks and are backed 105% in pound sterling. These banks not only serve the 4.5 million people who live here, but over one and a quarter million visitors who come each year from all over the globe. from one great international money exchange to another. The Casino de Lisboa in Macau.
From Hong Kong, the hydrofoils and new jet foils speed their way across the waters of the China Sea, passing by the busy ferries, rocking the occasional junk, and skimming by the craggy islands to Macau. to enjoy. Grand Prix racing, the bullfights, with all their pomp and splendor. This city has a great number of fascinating and unique places that give the visitor an insight into the historic Portuguese-Chinese background. Over 400 years old, this Portuguese enclave in China is one of the most photogenic places on earth with its ancient churches and historic buildings. Every window offers a different picture. Beyond this harbor waterway is China. The tombstones in this historic Protestant cemetery of Macau tell many notable stories about the famous foreign names which are enshrined here. A gifted artist, George Chinnery, and Lord Henry John Spencer Churchill, ancestor of Sir Winston. The Camo's Museum, with its pride of early Chinese porcelains and bronzes, was once the home of the famous British East India Company. You get that marvellous feeling in Macau that one minute you're in the Mediterranean, the next, old Shanghai. Hong Kong's huge population needs water. In fact, it consumes 200 million gallons every day. These water schemes, or reservoirs, and the unique new desalination plants are among the best, most modern and efficient in the world. In droughts, this pipeline from China supplies some of the much-needed additional water. It is perhaps the many skills of these patient craftsmen that set Hong Kong in world class. Their tireless energy and dexterous hands produce a precision... There are many small jewellery factories in Hong Kong making specially designed pieces with the meticulous craftsmanship found in all their handwork. This new digital watch is being assembled and checked for foreign export and local sales. These skeins of merino wool are being very carefully dyed to specific colors and hues at the well-known Taiping Carpet Factory at Taipo, located in the New Territories. Tours are conducted daily, showing you at first hand the various stages of rug making at its finest. At the end of your visit, you can place an order to be shipped directly to your home and country in the size, design and colours of your choice. These 20th century carpets are handmade with portable machines threading and weaving the most intricate of patterns. This work, like a painting by a master, involves hundreds of hours to complete. Pointing up once again, the untiring patience, dexterity and adaptability of the Chinese. The handwork of this award-winning cloisonné vase once more shows another expression of their artistic achievement.
jade, stone and wood carving are equally old and equally beautiful. So too are the ceramics, lacquer and painted figurines. Ivory carving has a history of over 3,000 years. In Hong Kong, one sees the old world techniques and styles which have been handed down to the young craftsmen of today. Alongside these ancient skills and crafts stands a modern day sculpture by Henry Moore. Chung Yi is one of the most important sculptors in the Far East. His gentle manner, strong hands and bold approach work equally well in metal, wood and stone. He has had many one-man and group exhibitions in Europe and North America. His creative talents are generously displayed throughout these countries as well as the Orient. Wuxius Wong an outstanding draftsman and colorist, is another of Hong Kong's well-known contemporary artists. His ancient heritage helps him to combine Western ideas and thinking with the familiar Chinese ink and rice paper. As dusk begins to fall, the faithful Star Ferry continues its endless shuttle of weary businessmen, workers, visitors and other travelers. While out in the new territories at Lok Ma Chau, the border separating Hong Kong from China. The sun sets in a burning mantle of scarlet and gold as the farmers wend their way home through the fields and by the narrow rivers to the tiny villages where all is tranquil. Hong Kong's driving nightlife continues at the same high level of energy and noise that exists in the daytime, be it in the streets, the shops, or the bars. Your choice of menu and restaurant is unlimited, delicious, and reasonable. The old days of Susie Wong are gone, but they have been replaced with a modern-day excitement that is hard to find in any other city. Chinese and Europeans alike try to relax and unwind with the swinging sounds which are internationally popular with the young throughout the world. One of the late night fun places is the discotheque in the cellar of this famous hotel. Now, a change of pace is provided by the familiar sounds that were so popular in the 30s and 40s and today are being rediscovered by young and old. In the heart of Hong Kong, the sound beat on. This is the poor man's nightclub, where the range of food is incredible. Everything from snake to eel, and of course, the famous Peking duck, octopus and roasted chestnut. You can buy watches, clocks, ivory and jade, jewelry of every description, trousers, shirts, shoes and sweaters, records, radios, cassettes and cameras. You ask for it, they'll have it. Night and day, Hong Kong shows its many faces. Stay long enough not to miss a single one.